Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Protest action has left one street vendor without his cart, which earns him his daily bread. Simon Philip, better known as Simple, claims that he was victimized for simply speaking out against the current administration. On Tuesday, Simple's vending operations were halted after his cart was dismantled. Simon Simple Philip is calling out supporters of the UWP government, who he says will go to any lengths necessary to appease the ruling party. Philip has been left without a vending stall after he says it was taken apart by CCC officials. He shares what transpired with Hot 7 TV and what he believes sparked that kind of behavior by the individual. He decided on Sunday when I decided to go on the, um, the drive saying Alan Chastney must go. And it is my democratic right to support who I wish and I listen to policies of both party and 70, right? Um, and then I decided to go on a vehicle. And while I was on the vehicle, I heard Richard Lemmy, simple, so more they see you, right? And I think that despite you support any party, no party has a right to, 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 to victimize you from earning a living in this country because we all are paying tax. He goes on to divulge the words which were uttered by that individual. You're going to go. We're taking them down that tent and something. You're not selling there anymore and seven things, right? Oh, when you say she just have to go, Chastity have to go, right? Um, then he tell me Tuesday, I'm not seven. But then I came here on Tuesday, I put my things there. I wanted him to take the tent down so that people can see that they are um, victimizing I that support the Central Labour Party. Philip maintains that this is not the way that party supporters on either side should act. What they should be concerned with is holding their representatives accountable. Are we in a, uh, we are in a country right now, a communist country that either you're against this government or you're not against this government. If you're against this government, you can speak. And if you're for the government, you can speak on the behalf of the government. And I said, that's wrong. And I said, we all have a right, despite of who we support, what party, yellow, red, to support to put a living in this country, right? And I'm saying that we should be, we should be, um, and, I, and what I'm saying to her, the point I'm bringing, that if this government is doing something there, Chatham is doing something good, and that's bad, it is my right to speak. And if, if, if politicians are smart, they would like pick up this guy saying that we're doing something that's not good, let us like try to, to, to do something better, to turn the pal into good and some hand and not victimize that. And that goes for both parties. A UWP supporter says the treatment given to Simple is unwarranted. I think they shouldn't interfere with Simple there because Simple is supporting the kids. Majority of the things he have selling is for children. I don't see why it affecting the city council. If it is affecting them, they should come and ask him for some payment, some, some form of payment, whether he paid that per week or that per month, and let it be, because simply doing nothing to affect nobody. He doesn't much speak about politics. Even he's a labor, he don't much talk about politics, but he's labor. But he, he's, not, he's not like me, that I would come and defend my government, defend my prime minister when I hear things about him. I will always do that. And the same way I could say, it was not fair to move him there like that. Desmond Joseph says that Simple should be reinstated immediately. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. Meanwhile, the mayor has come out to give his side of the story and explain why the vendor was removed from the spot which he occupied. Mayor Francis says he is not afraid to admit that the decision was politically motivated. Castries Mayor Peter St. Francis has shot back at candy vendor Simon Simple Philip, who says he was politically victimized. Philip, who was given a spot in Constitution Park to vend his candy, was recently asked by the CCC to pack up shop. Mayor Francis on Thursday did not mince words as he explained why Philip was removed in the spot that he was previously housed. It is Polka for Peter St. Francis. I don't know why St. Lucians, that politics, you have to play politics when it's convenient to them. And when it's inconvenient to them, politic, playing politics is a, is, 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 is a bad word. Of course it is political. So when he was on the road, saying Chasse must go, it wasn't political. It is right. So right now, we put him there. We take him out. It's still his right. So we don't have no rights. Mayor Francis explained that the vendor simply beat the hand that fed him. The gentleman was there. He has been supplied with electricity at no cost. The gentleman had a, a, a tent at no cost. 
The gentleman even marshaled a, a table of hours. Okay? The gentleman does not pay any vending fees for the days, for the, the, the time he has been there. The gentleman stuff, his equipment is being stored at CCC. That's to just show you how our good nature we went out to Mr. Simple. Now, as I said, I take full responsibility. But the hand that is feeding you, you are outside there, lambasting the hand that's going to feed you, that is feeding, the hand that, that, that feeds him. He's outside there beating pants saying it, it, it must go, that, that that person is not good, the mayor must go, the prime minister must go, the government must go. So all what we did, is that he gone before us? Mayor Francis explained that he was the reason the vendor was allowed to vend in an otherwise no vending zone, and the vendor repaid the CCC with betrayal. I, Peterson Francis, take full responsibility for Mr. Simple being there to vend and Mr. Peterson being taken out of there. Okay. Mr. Simple went to someone, which I will that we are later on. I'll, I'll tell you why I'm not going to name anybody. For help. We, for, you want to vend within Castries. I had my vendor's coordinator to go all around Castries to see where he could vend. We did the Boulevard and Bridge Street and this place out of, out of the question for vending. What I mean? So we went, he went all around with him. Eventually, he settled there. He, 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 he asked whether he could stay there. We, if you realize we don't allow vending in Constitution Park. We only do that if somebody have a fundraising. Mayor Francis is adamant that the issue was dealt with in the right manner. Reporting for Hot 7 News, I am Janine Gonza. The enactment of the Botham Jaw law comes as a bittersweet moment for the mother of Botham Jaw, Alison Jaw. The Botham Jaw Act was signed into law in the state of Texas by Governor Greg Abbott on Thursday. The law now makes it an offense for police to turn off body cameras during investigations, among other moves for transparency. Jaw says that while she is elated that her son's name is attached to legislation, the only reason is because he is no longer here. I believe that the Beaufort Je Act um, really symbolizes that his death is really, in his death he is making changes on behalf of others because the law does not help him, the law helps other people in America. and. I'm hoping that as time goes on, goes along, we will be able to make amendments to that law to even strengthen some of the components, some other components of the law. Because initially, there was a component relating to the castle doctrine, again, that was used in Amber Geiger's defense, but it was removed um, from the law. But it is an opportunity as time goes by to add other components to strengthen the law and have it well related to both of them. In September 2018, 26-year-old Botham Jean was shot and killed by Amber Geiger in his own apartment. Geiger was an off-duty Dallas police officer who said she entered Jean's apartment believing it was her own. A year later, Geiger was sentenced to 10 years in prison for his murder. Since Jean's death, the North Texas community has done several things to commemorate his life and legacy, including naming a street after him. Alison Jean had a message for St. Lucia. What I think we have have to do in St. Lucia, however, is to ensure that our justice system responds in such a way. We could use Texas as an example and see all of what has been done um, following Botham's death. There was a street named after him. There's now a law in his name. And um, we're looking at other people who have been impacted in similar ways in St. Lucia and the question is what have we done? So it's a lesson for us and let's see how best we can make some changes um, and ensure that justice is served 
for the many victims that we have had. We have Arnold Joseph, Kimberly DeLeo, Chaka Dan Daniel, Victor Morris, and so many others um, that we still do not have a conviction um, for their death. The act will be effective the 1st of September 2021. Just over a month to go until the Tokyo Olympics, Japan has announced it is lifting its coronavirus state of emergency in the capital this weekend. The current state of emergency allows only 5,000 people or 50% of the venue capacity, whichever is smaller. The government now says areas not under any other restrictions can have up to 10,000 fans. Despite easing the restrictions, the Japanese Prime Minister urged people to watch the games at home. The St. Lucia Labour Party says it will do all in its power to capture the youth vote during this upcoming general election. The party has maintained, once elected into office, it will designate a section of the economy for the youth and has dubbed it the youth economy. At an SLP press conference on Wednesday, MP for Viewfort North, Moses Jabatis, outlined just how the party plans to gain those votes in his constituency and across St. Lucia. We have promised the young people of St. Lucia that through our youth economy initiative, they will get assistance, they will get financing to do the things that they love and those things will continue to create employment for them and will help them to, to, to employ one or two other persons. In View Fort North, for example, we have a number of young people who are into hairdressing, they are into you know, nail technicians and they, these young people from Bellevue, from Greece, from Kaku, from Vigie, all around Piro, what they want is is, is a little build to add to the to the building of their parents. So they want um, plywood and, and equipment, um, electrical supplies, water, sinks, and so on, so that they can employ another young person from Jay for North. And that is what we are promising. That was the MP for Viewfort North, Moses Jabatis. This is the Hot 7 TV Nightly News. There's more news after the break.